right. So today's show for me, and I feel like for me and you know my team, this is like a highly anticipated show. So this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful woman, extremely talented. She goes by Lammy. She is an artist, y'all. And when I say artist, I do not use that term lightly. I mean an artiste. She is an artiste. So I'm going to give you a little background on Lammy before I bring her on in. So yes, Allison is reading her notes. I'm a professional. You know, I'm not like Oprah with a teleprompter. You know, I got to give you what I can give you right now. So background on Lammy. So she is a self-taught painter and an artist specializing in metal point. We will obviously get down to what exactly metal point is, if you don't already know. Her main focus is creating positive images of women and people of color in precious metals like 24 karat gold, silver, and platinum. She uses the aesthetics of the 15th century technique and widely used during the Renaissance period and applies them to her imagery of Afro-futurism. Afro Mouthful, y'all, but I got it. So, little background. She's originally from Harlem and Brooklyn, New York. She lived in Atlanta and most recently New Orleans. And now she has graced Chicago with her presence and she has moved here. So, with that being said, in that introduction that I just gave y'all off the fly, we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring her in. All right. We're adding her now, folks. I'll get rid this. Is, it's going to be good, y'all. It's going to be good. Oh. Wait. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I got the chain. There got we it. Go. <laughs> there she is. I was like, ah! <laughs> That's what happens. As soon as you go live, it's like, you got to flip the camera. You got to flip the script. I thought I had it all together, and then all of a sudden, I went, Ooh. <laughs> That's how anyway. But hey, how are you? How are you? Oh how gosh, are you? Finally, me. We had I know. What I feel like a month. It feels like I know. a month already. It what? But can you believe the month went by? <sighs> it's unfortunate. And but I know. But it did. It went by a little too fast for me. But you know, here we are. Neither here nor there. I hear you. So, oh my goodness, welcome. <laughs> so we did the intro. I told the folks where you're from. So just. I want them to hear from you. Give us a little bit of your background and just, you know, who you are, you know, what makes you you? Well, the funny thing is, is when it comes down to the artwork that I'm doing now, it stems all the way back to when I was a child mm -hmm. and, you know, being raised in a Catholic school and Catholic church and everything Catholic, what I did was actually look at the signs of the cross. Mm -hmm. I, and I found love with just the art itself of, how it was very romantic to me mm -hmm. you know i could give two craps about what was going on in church although i'm a different person now amen but, um <laughs> yeah when you're a kid they're yeah. telling you what to do and you're like but i gotta go, that, go so. i know i know and you get you get graded for it um anyway so then when i discovered leonardo da vinci and um michelangelo and stuff like that i really 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 I, you know, your heart just looks at it and it moves and stuff like that. But just in the last five years, mm -hmm. when I started going through, like, going to museums and stuff like that, I go, what would it be like if the world was different mm -hmm. and we decided that we could turn around and go, do you know how beautiful those people would look if we were able to put a little bit of color, a little it bit, you works. know? But 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 when I say that, I'm talking about something like classic, something soft, because we're not associated with soft half the time. You know, we're associated with other things, but there's a level of history in that beauty, you know, and then bring it forth to, uh, you know, to the to our time to actually show. Now, when I started doing this and, and I I taught myself how to do this when I went to Spain, to Barcelona. Oh my God. And so oh. it, it was amazing. The, it was for a residency and we were actually in the fields, in the wine fields. And, you know, they got the world's best wine. Oh, yes. And we were going through all the materials 
just so we can have something to build on the um, the metal point that we were mm -hmm. doing, the, that I was doing. At the end of the day, um, as I brought it forth, I saw a, never saw it before, saw the Black Madonna. Oh, yeah. And then, okay, so you're looking at the Black Madonna, and then the next thing you know, conceptually, imagine doing that instead of a sculpture or a painting, actually turning around and using that technique that's 500, I mean, not 500, uh, 15th century. Yeah, it's 500. <laughs> um, and then bring it to what people look like now. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, and I showed it for the first time at the George Washington Carver Interpretive Museum in Dothan, Alabama, mm -hmm. I didn't know what pe how people were going to take it until they felt when they saw it, it made them feel positive mm -hmm. about themselves. And the reason why is because I took something that was precious put it in their likeness, mm -hmm. and therefore they felt precious. They felt worthy. And yeah. so we're always wearing the jewelry. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> we just can't. But can you, well, we just got style. But yeah, when, it, <laughs> but when style. it comes to, <laughs> when it comes to actually being the precious mm -hmm. metal, it took on a whole nother mind. Oh, yeah. that, I, and I was, and I said, I got to keep doing this. And because it really, like little children, but mm -hmm. the thing that got me, it wasn't just the little children. It was the people who were 60, 80, that felt that positivity of, of the likeness. Right. And I was so happy, you know, doing that. Yeah, because I think I've always admired art, but I've never really gotten deep, deep, deep into it because like I said, I don't feel like I saw a lot of me in it. Now, we're talking mm -hmm. 2020. Oh, yeah. We can find, you know, people doing us, us people doing us anywhere. Like, we just I know. I know. Are out there. But I feel like when I was growing up and then, you know, being a child and I lived overseas and I lived in Spain and I lived in Japan, mm -hmm. it was like mm -hmm. I didn't see a lot of me in art. Mm -hmm. So, to come back to the States and then now as a grown woman and I'm growing, and to see myself in artwork, it's just, mm -hmm. it's fantastic. Like, it's a beautiful thing to see because I feel like it took me, t you know, 20 plus years to actually see that. I totally get it. Now, this is the thing. You never stop growing. Oh, yes. If you stop growing, you're probably dead. But <laughs> the thing that gets me, the thing that gets me is like, if you get to see things, I didn't, it's not like I didn't get it, but when I was a kid and, well, when I was, in 1990 actually was when I started this and not meaning the being a full-time artist being a, a painter um I took I worked so much on emotion I that's what got me was working on emotions like crazy and the reason why is because we all are feeling what I'm trying to paint mm -hmm. okay so now I'm and, and think of it this way. The first 20 years of me doing artwork was about me healing, yep. about me working something out of my system, me trying to feel better about myself. If I can create something beautiful, then I've achieved mm -hmm. being beautiful, yep. if that makes any sense. Yes. Um, so the next thing about that was that I, I published, I self-published a book on those first 20 years. Mm -hmm. And then I said, now, how am I going to learn how to make art out of joy? Right. Wow. And it took me a while. Mm -hmm. It took me a while. But I am ecstatic by the fact that whenever I'm, I'm, I'm always feeling joyous about the process. Mm hmm and that's the most beautiful thing that that keeps me going. The process as well as the fact that I want to create excellence and beauty so that when you see it, mm -hmm. you know, you say, we are brilliant. Wow, Period. that's a mouthful right there. Do, do you know what that I mean? It, and slam click it right now. She, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
That is amazing. And I think, just like you said, we are always growing. And it's crazy because just me, you know, I'm only 28 years. I'll be 28 this year. So I'm only 27. Mm -hmm. So just to see where I am now and where I mm -hmm. was three years ago when I moved to Chicago, I am a completely different person. Like, And you will be in three years from now? Yes. Like, you're gonna I mean, be another how you how we just like we just evolve it's a never-ending cycle of growing what goes on what i always feel like i've had many lifetimes mm -hmm. that's how i usually take it you will always have the memories you will always have the experience but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to stay if it, especially mm -hmm. if it's a bad situation yes. or something like that it does not define you and it doesn't mean that you stay. If you can dream it, you can do it. Mm -hmm. That's my philosophy. 100%. Yeah, so. I got to put that in writing, put that up on the wall. If you can dream it, you can do it. I'll, I'll write. I, I do feel it. And, and, and always remember, you're not alone. God is always with you. Oh, 100%. Okay, yeah. so I want to talk about Metal Point. So yes. I, did, I watched one of your videos earlier, and I was like, I was in shock. Because I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is she really doing what I think she's doing? So it's right here. You this is just one. People, what is Metal Point? So Metal Point is actually drawing with precious metal. Now this here is silver. Mm -hmm. It's the real silver, just the silver. Well, actually, this is more silver. This is ninety nine nine. This okay. one's nine twenty five. Mm -hmm. We usually wear nine twenty five. Um, so the silver point is usually the most um, common, mm -hmm. but this here is 24 karat gold. Okay. And my mother-in-law actually gifted this to me. And I was like, well, how am I going to turn it into this? <laughs> but you see the round edges? Uh-huh. Perfect. I was able to do a um, silver, not a silver point, a metal point of 73 inches by 58. It's at Gallery Guichard right now. Wow. It took me months to do. It took me my, I started it in New Orleans and then I finished it when I got here. Wow. And it was, it took me months to do, but it's, it's one of those pieces that I'm extremely proud of because it's part of the Indigo 7 series, which I've been doing. Um, it's blue um, background and I'm bringing like brass and gold you know, when you yes. see that, well, you see like this here, mm -hmm. but there's one like right here. Mm -hmm. And that one is a woman, uh, she's done in copper. Okay. And then her surroundings, like her skin is copper. Her body shape is a real woman. That you know, is, like, it speaks for itself. That the yeah. That can do like you're doing a woman's body out of that richness because it's yeah. rich. Like when you see that's it, it that's with it. the blue. It's yes. so rich and it resonates for itself. Like when you see copper and silver against that blue background, like that's powerful. But the thing is, is if you see it, mind you, it's metal. Mm -hmm. So what you're actually looking at is the reflection of light mm -hmm. on the metal. And it can't be like you're looking at me right now and you're seeing the light on me. But you see here, mm -hmm. I work on things like that. I work on this. I work on the highlights of the body, of the fabric, of, of the folds in the fabric, so that when the light hits it at the right moment, you are so drawn into it that you're just like, oh my God, I can't. And I, the reason why I love it so much is because it warms up the house. Mm -hmm. I create it in daylight. I create it in natural light. But then as the day goes on and the lighting in your house changes, mm -hmm. it changes with you. And it's almost like mood feeling, and it just, it brings warmth, it brings, you know, that whole feeling of what you, you know, I, I love it, basically. I, I love it. I, look, unless I'm being my price range, it's going to be hanging up right here on this wall. Look, I got a spot for it right, we're all right Well, go. I'm glad. Yep. We'll talk, we'll talk. Yeah. So, you know, you grew up in Harlem and Brooklyn, New York. You moved to Atlanta, you moved to New Orleans. I could say why Chicago, heck, I picked Chicago, so I know why. But why did you choose Chicago in all places? Okay, so the gallery that I'm in now is Gallery Guichard. It's in Brownsville. Mm -hmm. um, 
the most amazing thing is in New Orleans, I applied for the Bombay Sapphire Artisan Series. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that is? I haven't. Um, okay, so Bam Bombay Sapphire is the liquor. They're a sponsor. Oh, they, yes. do an, the they do an artisan yeah. series. Ah. Yeah, but they do an, okay. And they pick key cities around the United States. Chicago's one of them, but the main group of people are here at Gallery Guichard. Okay. Um, they have New York, Atlanta, they have New Orleans, although I don't think they're doing New Orleans anymore. San Francisco, Toronto, you know, they're doing all that. Anyway, in 2017, I applied and I won New Orleans. Wow. And so I ended up going to Art Basel as, you know, to, to compete nationally. Oh, wow. I didn't get in, mm -hmm. but you know, my art was there. And then I got invited by the gallery mm -hmm to they they invited me to to ask if i wanted to be a part of it so part of their gallery mm -hmm. so i was like yes i was excited so ship the artwork came up to do the first show mm -hmm. me and my husband looked everywhere and we're like oh my god i think we're cheating on new york <laughs> And, and the reason why I say that is because we, our love is for New York. You know, we love our New York. But when we came here, yes. we were like, and okay, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Next, we gotta go. Yeah, and that was in uh, 2018. So then we came, I came two more times. Mm -hmm. He came twice, the second time. He actually applied for a job and got it. Oh, and so we were like, hello. Gotta go. Yeah, we're, we're gone. And, um, and the fact that I, you know, I work with the gallery here already, it just felt like a no-brainer, mm -hmm. you know? And the thing that, I, that made me very happy was that they were the gallery that actually saw the work and they loved it and they knew. They, they didn't see anything like it ever. Mm -hmm. um, but, or maybe, you, you know, they said, they said, I've never seen anything like this. So what happened was that the fact that I had all this body of work from Barcelona and from New Orleans, mm -hmm. they said, you know, they, they have it, you know, and they, I'm, I'm so happy I have, you know, that to work on with. Me. Oh, yeah, I got to take a field trip. Are they you like. Come, they're doing something in, uh, I think it's the 17th. I'll send you the information. Okay, yes. And it's a woman's show. Oh, I'll be there. So, so not only is it a woman's show, but also um, we're going to be doing an artist talk. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I definitely have to be there for that. Sorry, it's up here on my calendar. I'll send so, it. So <laughs> definitely, like, what is it like? Because, you know, I've never really had a conversation with, and like an artist and a woman of color like what is it like to be a woman of color and to be an artist like that is your title that's who you are you know that's your bread and butter because you know I'm, I'm an avid reader I read a lot so anytime I pick up a book and they're depicting an artist they're usually you know they're usually white you don't mm -hmm. read a lot about black artists so, like, what is that like? How has it been trying to, like, get your work out there? And do you see a difference in, you know, your other counterparts that may not be Black and may not be women and how their work is viewed and then how your work is viewed as well? Well, when I first started in New York, I started an art, um, what do you call it, an art group called Sonia, South of the Navy Art Artists in mm -hmm. Brooklyn. And it was a way for artists to get together you know, stuff like that. And in my mind, I do have to tell you that you do things collectively mm -hmm. so that you can be part of something and get your work out, okay. you know? Um, so that being said, you still have to figure out how to navigate mm -hmm. because remind, uh, remind you, I'm a self-taught artist. Most artists that I was around in Brooklyn went to school. Okay. Okay. So to me, I, you know, I always felt like I had to work harder. You know, you know how they always would say the black tax. Yeah. Okay. So it, it wasn't just, I never saw it as me being a black woman. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just a given. If that's your reason for not doing that's on you ain't on me. Mm -hmm. That's how I have to say, take it things. Yes. So then, um, 
going down to, to uh, Atlanta, because I went from my mom when she was sick. So this is the thing. It turns into who you know. Story of our lives. <laughs> and, not, and not what you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, I, I mean, I did every little thing. I did all these pieces of artwork that were like, and, and tons and tons of smaller pieces, did a lot of work, living and breathing. And for some reason, the bigger pieces always seem to go off the wall. But I usually use the bigger pieces as to draw people in mm -hmm. and then try and sell all these little pieces. Yes. Okay. I use that same formula in, in, in uh, New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And then that's where I met my husband. And he turns around and he says, do you realize you put just as much work in the smaller pieces you. than you do they, just like you do the bigger pieces? Mm -hmm. Concentrate on big ones. And I was fighting him. I really was. Of we don't want to, we um, don't want to accept it. It's like, no, no, no. Yeah, but at the same time, when I started concentrating on that, it really did make a difference. Mm -hmm. Because then I, I still had, I had a job at the time. So, you know, but then just as I started doing the Silver Point, I left the job. Mm -hmm. We went to Spain and I've been doing it ever since. And I have to tell you, the amount of work that I've been putting into the pieces actually is worth it. And if you know, if you know the artwork, if you know the technique, if you know all that, then it's fine. But you got to actually explain it to people. Yes. Because they're not going to know. Okay, then you turn around and if you're a black woman, mm -hmm. there is a chance that I only know one other black woman that does this work. And her name mm -hmm. is Marjorie William Smith. And she, the reason, I, I never met her, mm -hmm. but I saw her work and she's my inspiration for the work that I do. You know, and she's another black woman. I don't know any other black women that are doing this. So to tell you the truth, I just try and do the best work possible. Build it and it will come. That's how I have to say, mm -hmm. because any other time, I can't worry about the small stuff. Yeah. And I, I, when I got to New Orleans, I just really, really tried really hard to do really good work. At the end of the day, if you like it, you like it. If you, you don't, don't, you don't. don't. It, it, I can't bend over backwards. I also don't, I'm not around a lot of people a lot mm -hmm. because I concentrate more on trying to create. I believe that I collect energies. And when you collect other people's energy, there's no room left for you. I'm the same way. Same. And I so a lot of you have to about. limit. You have to limit. My friend Monique just came on. Yeah. And, and we've had this conversation mm -hmm. in my studio in New Orleans. And I tell you that energy, you got to be around people who just totally light you up because when they're gone, you're happy you saw them. Yeah. You happy that it, because their energies help you create something else. And then you, mm, you know, things like that. But I limited myself to a, to a lot of people. I, I mean, to a short, mm -hmm. short list of people, you know? So that being said, I care so much more about creating the work. If you are going to not like me because I'm self-taught, because this is the other thing I forgot to tell you. My work, there's a self-taught dynamic mm -hmm. and it's outsider and it's more of naive art. So if I go into a place that does self-taught, they don't want me okay. because I'm too refined, mm -hmm. you know, and I go, you know, <clears throat> you, you know, <laughs> But yeah, especially if you're looking for representation or you're looking for somebody to, to show your work, mm -hmm. their stuff is naive. And I have no problem with naive, but they don't want to take me because I'm too polished. Yeah. Wow. What a thought. Yeah. And that has nothing to do with race or sex yeah. right there. That's you true. Know? So you got all these things coming at you. And I do have to say, when I left New York, there was one thing. They were very misogynist. Mm hmm you know, I realized that there are more men in the art in, and in Atlanta, there were more men supported by women, more men artists supported by women 
those women are the ones who worked hard to get those men into their positions. Mm. Touche. I just, it was just an observation. <laughs> and it's crazy that we observe those things. And it's like you observe it and don't even have to say anything. Because just like you said, it's about all about who you know, not what you know. And that's what it seems like. And I feel like in a lot of fields that people go to school and get degrees in, it's literally about who you know. Because when you graduate from college, they're not looking at your grade point average. They're, they're looking, looking at, at the fact that you have the degree. They just want the But it's not only stuff. that. It's only it's their teachers too. Yep. Their teachers and their the faculty and I those are the people because remember they are supporting mm -hmm. their institution. So these kids or I don't want to say kids, these professional yeah artists that are out there now they will look at the alma mater their you know their yes. student population because they want to show well this is you know this is one of my students or they're from my da -da -da -da. you know there is a connection mm -hmm. and I remember somebody said to me um when I was in New Orleans and I love her dearly she's such a sweet person but I didn't know her at the time and I was recommended for a residency in New Orleans. I'm not going to mention it, but they know what it is. <laughs> and they and as I was applying, I didn't get in. And then I met her maybe six months, the, the executive director, six months after the fact. And her wording was, I wish I knew you. If that I couldn't, doesn't speak volumes, good Lord. But then this shows you how good she is. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, when I did meet her, she explained that so well that I didn't feel defensive. Mm -hmm. Because the first thing we do is we feel defensive when we don't get what we want. Yes. You know, I but I, yeah. And so it's not that I really wanted to get with them, but I'm like, well, you didn't look at the work, you know, and, you know, artists are going to do that. Mm -hmm. My work is, uh, but um, at the end of the day, you sit there and you go, Maybe I wasn't supposed to. That's the way, greatest thing about life. You can let go of things. Yeah. Oh, say that. You, you sit I'm there and you go. It, Lord, I'm working on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm working you on go it. like this. Yeah. You go. You go. Yeah, I wanted it, but I didn't get it. God got something else going. Okay, I'll just leave it in His hand. <laughs> you know. That mindset. You better watch out. I'm working me, on it. Oh my goodness. You'll get there probably faster than I will, <laughs> than I did. <laughs> and look, time's a ticking. I'm ready to be done with it. I'm ready to be over it. So I know we've already touched on, you know, you being self-taught, but, and you know, you, you know, how you have to navigate yourself around mm -hmm. to get your work out there, but how difficult was it to be self-taught? Because I wouldn't even know where to start. I've been doing this since I was five. The only thing, in, I do have to tell you, go back to self-taught. It's not so much that it was the self-taught part. It was the part that it was therapy for me mm -hmm. I, without anybody looking at it. I used to get bouts of depression, and I would be either writing poetry or doing sketching. And then I would be happy again. You know, life would happen. And then I would get another bout. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing is that each time I came back to it, I was better than the last. And, and when I was doing it, uh, you know, my aunt's boyfriend put a pencil in my hand mm -hmm. and showed me how to do a stick figure at five years old. And I've been doing things, you know, like I've been very interested in people all the time. Mm -hmm. And so my inspiration is people I create. It's not really difficult. The only thing is, is that you have to believe in what you're doing. You have to believe that you can get to the other side of drawing that first line. You, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There are days when I could give up and I go, mm -mm. you know, <laughs> it's like, just... why? why give up? You've made it so far. Well, there are days when you, you know, there, there are some, let's just say for me, I always think about, oh, I wanted that so badly. Uh -huh. And 
if you don't get certain things, you feel like you fail. Yes. Oh gosh, one hundred percent. But and and then you want to give up. Mm -hmm. But I don't go into that really bad depression like I did when I was a kid and in my twenties. I just go, mm. and then all of a sudden I sit still for a second, and then I go, something's coming. If I didn't get this, something is coming. I wasn't supposed to get it. Mm -hmm. Wow. I have to remember that. I have to remember that. And so when it goes to the self-taught thing, I just, I just think it's all about evolving from the next to the next to the next to the next. You know, you're, you're going to make, you, you know, God knows what I'll be doing next year, you know, wow. like the kind of art that I'll be doing next year. Mm -hmm. Or how, if this art actually evolved into a whole nother round of, of artwork, which it always does. It mm -hmm. keeps evolving into another set. So I went from Barna Black, um, and that was the self-taught process mm -hmm. of just sitting there trying to figure out, can I do this? I almost gave up when I was in, two weeks into Barcelona. I almost gave up. Don't I <laughs> And my husband said, we did not travel all of the, this way. For you to give up. <laughs> Hold on. He goes, he goes, we could have kept our ass in New Orleans. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? <laughs> so then... Um, he turns, you know, I, I don't know how it happened, but then we just started collecting stuff in the fields, create, making our own charcoal. From that point to the, you know, I, I sat there and was like, I think I can do this. Mm -hmm. So as time went on, what we did do was that we ended up finding what was the perfect charcoal. And then once we got to the perfect charcoal, which turned into like butter, you know, it, it just made everything better. Then when we came back, it was just, we, we evolved the charcoal into chalk, black chalk, uh, acrylic. And then as time went on, we said, okay, we're not going to do this. We're going to do that. You know, I do it. He just, he's, I, I call him my, uh, my research and development guy. Right. Because he always comes up with things and I go, hmm. And then, you know, I'll implement. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I won't give up. You know, I want to as a self-taught artist, but I won't give up because I'm like, mm, there's so much going on in this. I can do this. I can do this. Yeah, I think for me, especially, you know, at the point in my life where I'm at, I, I've dipped my you know, my toes, my fingers into so many different things like modeling. And then, you know, I have my degree in education and then, you know, I'm a flight attendant, and, you know, with everything going on in the world, it's like, you know, will I be a flight attendant in six months? Because honey, the way the airlines are looking, I'm I know, I know, I know, I know, so I know. I'm about to figure it out. And then it's like, do I want to go back to, do I want to, you know, start teaching again? Or do I want to go back to school? It's like, I'm not, I have gotten to the point in my life where I don't stress because it's like me not having me not having a job. That's the, the inevitable because that's something that's out of my control. Like a virus came and completely messed up the airline industry. I have no control over that. So the last thing that I can do is sit home and by myself and be in here biting my fingernails down to the nubs and you know sweating and crying and upset over something that is literally out of my control there's nothing that i can do i can grow from it and i can see you know what i've had my toes in so many different things maybe i should make this my main focus as you know being a flight attendant was guess what now i'm getting the opportunity to switch it up so why not this is the time to actually test who you are this is the time when you have something like this it really yep. does and the reason why is because there was something that I just went through where I was going to go back to work. Mm -hmm. um, and then I always feel that when it's going against my being, like to literally just as I was about, just as I applied, I ended up selling two pieces. See, it was like confirmation. And I knew it was a test. Mm -hmm. I knew it was a test. And I'm like, you know, but for some reason, you got to go through the motion. Yes. Remember, remind, remember what you like to do the most and be the master of it. Yeah. 
Okay. So don't, no, that wasn't do you get what I mean? Just, you got to be the, ma do what you know that's uniquely you, be the master of it because nobody can be you doing it. You bring more to the table than you realize. Mm -hmm. And that my, that's my biggest thing. It's like, you know, I, I used to do everything. I, when I was in New York, I was in a band. Mm -hmm. I was doing my music. I mean, my, not my music. I was running a gallery. I was doing my art. And I had a full-time job. Okay? And I, to me, that was what New Yorkers do. You, you become valuable at everything. And I think as time went on, you actually look, what do you really want to do? Okay. And so as I'm looking at what I really wanted to do, I wanted to be an artist, but I did not want to be the starving artist. Mm -hmm. I did not want to be the artist that somebody has to take care of me or, you know, when I say take care of me, I'm talking about like on my mother, you know, like my mother didn't raise me for her to be taking care of me. Yes. You, you know what I mean? She, she did it already. I'm an adult now. So as time goes on, I sat there and I, I looked at the people in the industry, whether it's music, whether it's writing, whether it's artwork, and I saw what they do. They do it full time and they're yeah. good at it because they do it full time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's everything they do. And so I said, if, and I, it's funny, I had a conversation with my husband years later. Um, I was like, if I could just find a patron or something and turn the creation of artwork into dividends, you know, and when I sell a piece of artwork, they get a dividend of it, mm -hmm. you know, and I thought about that. And I swear within six months later, we ended up in, in Spain. You know, it, it, it's, it's like the dynamic. The dynamics kind of change, and what I what was very important to me back in the day is really is not that important because the other thing that I realized that being a New Yorker and not saying all New Yorkers are like this, but I think as a society we really do concentrate on the material thing, mm -hmm. and we don't feel validated unless we have the material thing. Yeah. And that's why you need the extra money for this and the extra money for that. And, you know, at the end of the day, I just sat there and I realized I don't need a two or three bedroom apartment with a TV in each room, with a stereo in each room. And you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like I would love it for other things, but yes. it was only me at the time. And I had a two bedroom apartment and I, you had to see how you downsize things and then you realize you put value on the wrong thing. That You're not putting my generation I'm... to a T. I think so much in my generation and just how the world is right now, we put so much value on material and it's just like, okay, what is that material going to get you? What are those material things going to bring to you? Like, mm -hmm. well, what is it going to do for your? It's not going to do anything. You know, you're it's making not. somebody else rich off of those material things. I know. And and I cared so much more about, and as I evolved and started thinking, I, got, I cared so much more about the fact that no matter where I go, there that's where I'll be. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? Yes. So the art goes wherever I go. The art inside of me will always be there. I can go anywhere and do it. So when I lost everything, because I did lose everything, mm -hmm. when I got to Atlanta, because it was 2008. I had to start yeah. all the way over. <laughs> and that's the thing. But the feeling that you go through when you lose everything, mm -hmm. you feel like your value, your, the, your value is so nothing. And then for some reason, all I kept thinking of was, but you're still rich. You still got the art inside of you. You know, it'll happen. May not happen at this moment, but may not happen when you want. You know, it. who? It will happen. And so, it's amazing how the last twelve years have been. Wow, from the moment I lost everything until now, I'm I'm like, who knew? 
Who knew? But there's such a level of freedom when you're not really pulled down with the material thing. Yes. It's also another level of freedom that when you do create, you're actually touching people's soul and you just keep going. You, you're not doing it to, to pat yourself on the back. You're doing it because, yes, I did this. You like, okay, good. If it makes you feel good, if you feel like you can be even a better person in your heart and your soul, I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? I'm fine. That is a, that's a mouthful. And that's, I think I've gotten to the point in my life where, like when I moved to Chicago three years ago for my job, I literally had to start my life over mm -hmm. like I like I sold everything I had like you know I was in college in Tallahassee I put everything in storage because I had my own apartment and I literally started from the bottom it was like I started from the bottom as far as how much I was earning I started from mm -hmm. the bottom as far mm -hmm. as oh well you know I lived by myself but I'm literally starting at the bottom of the totem pole for my pay so I got to get three other roommates and I got to do this for a year and I got to save my money like I literally started all the way over from moving to Chicago and not knowing anybody. The only mm -hmm. person I knew, only people I knew were my roommates. I didn't know anybody in like a couple of people in my training class. I didn't know anybody else. So when I moved to Chicago, I literally started all the way over from releasing people from my past. I had to leave them where they were at because you they weren't to. willing to grow with me. So I had to literally say, you know what, for my sanity, and for my growth as a person, I have to leave you where you are because you're not willing to grow with me. You're not willing mm -hmm. to take this journey. So if I sit here and I try to bring you with me, you're going to bring me back down. Because before I moved to Chicago, I was definitely in a rocky place deciding whether I was going to go back to school, if I was just going to work full time. Like, what was I going to do? Mm -hmm. And when the opportunity came about for my job, at first, I was like, you know what? Nope, I got my mind made up. I'm going back to school. I'm going to get my master's. No. And then I went home for the holidays, and it was like an epiphany because my mom was so no, no, no. You had an aha moment. It was an aha moment because my mom was like, baby, you can just stay home. Like, you can even move back home, and you can live with us and save our rent. You can take classes online. She was giving me all. She was giving me the good stuff. And then it was like I was in Walmart with my sister. We, I will never forget it. We were in Walmart. I was looking for cotton balls. And I got on my phone and American Airlines, they sent me an email to set up my interview for them to fly me out. And I literally was like, I told my sister, I said, sis, I'm going to do it. She was like, oh, okay. Because they were both like, oh, whatever. I was like, you know, I'm going to do it. I'm going to see what it's like. And then the pro from the time that I decided that I was going to take that journey, it has been smooth sailing. Literally from leaving Tallahassee, when I tell y'all I had an apartment and I only had that apartment for like three to four months and I had a year lease and it was either you pay out that lease, you find somebody to take over your lease or they gonna send that debt to collections because they want their money. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? The day before I was supposed to pay rent, y'all, somebody subleased that apartment. It was like somebody literally walked, I, somebody, my man, the management called me and was like, you left the apartment so clean. That young lady walked in there. She looked at it and she wanted it. She signed that lease on the spot. It was literally like from when I had an epiphany and decided mm -hmm. to listen and take the journey. It was like my life changed. At you listened to the, the universe. Time. You listened to the universe. And I'm so glad I yeah. did because if I would have went against it, only the Lord knows where I would be right now. <laughs> but it was like yeah. when I decided to take that journey and I listened it was just up from there, from, you know, getting all these opportunities with my company. You know, I did a photo shoot for them. I've been in a campaign and, you know, I've traveled to see the world. You know, I did that when I was younger, but now I'm getting paid to see the world. And it's just like, if I wouldn't have listened, where would I be? Mm -hmm. And to be where I am now, it's like, I, it's, it's unbelievable. Sometimes I can't find the words. Like, I just walk around in my apartment sometimes, and I'm like, I, how did I get here? Like, <laughs> how did I make it here? The fact that you can actually take a moment and, and say that is it shows you the blessings. Mm -hmm. And I, I totally believe in that. And the reason why I say that is because you took time to listen. You took time to listen. That, that was the biggest thing.
And Lord knows I listened to, I haven't listened to Jesus my whole life, but it took that one moment. I was like, you know what? I, I tell you, but you know what the funniest thing is, is like when I, um, when there are things that I have to say, it's my life. Mm -hmm. I can't. I can't, I can't turn around and constantly think about what other people think or what other people feel, you know, um, because if it's that ingrained in you to act upon it, I really do think you should. Yes. You know, and you're talking about you moved here and you didn't know anybody. I still know maybe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Look, this is how many people I, I know. know. <laughs> the only reason why I know people for real is because of my job. If my well, job, that's good. Well, you know, most of the, um, I I know the people from Gallery Glashard. Mm -hmm. I keep meeting new people, whatever, and the landlord or whatever. But when we got here, hell started breaking loose with, you know, what do you call And I was home all the time doing artwork. So, you know, I didn't really pay attention. I thought I was going to have time, and I didn't it's because right. everything you just happened. You need to know. And so everything I've been doing is actually online, which I never thought I would be doing. But mm -hmm. it's like now, now everything is like a reality show online. <laughs> Look, everything wants to be a reality show. I know, I so know. So there was one question. Let me tell you. Yeah. Let me catch. She sent me a whole look. This is how I need my guests to come, okay? Uh, if, I ask, if I email you and I say, what would you like for us to discuss? You better come with this, okay? She sent me an email, baby. Okay. <laughs> so this is something I really, really, really wanted to touch on. Mm -hmm. How art has been the catharsis, storyteller, and the purveyor of the soul of our people. Well, think about the, the, the sign of the times that we're in right now. Mm -hmm. We know more about our history now because of the writers, mm -hmm. the artists. Um, it, okay, when I was growing up, I didn't see a lot, even though I was raised in Harlem, mm -hmm. I knew the, I knew the peop, black people that I was around, family, neighbors, and stuff like that. But you don't read about it in history. Mm -hmm. You get a paragraph in this whole book that's this thick, you get to college and you're like, you don't know. And then the funniest thing is, it's like, you, I took African-American history three times, mm -hmm. but the teacher was so volatile because I did not like how he was teaching. It, he was turning people against and angry mm -hmm. towards each other. It drove me crazy. The fourth time I took it, you're going to laugh. It was a gay, white, British teacher. But he knew what he was talking about. He knew everything. But then if you think about it, there are more people in, uh, around the world that know our history at mm -hmm. the time, that knew our history more than we knew. We didn't know it. And then on top, so then go to the other side of this. So you're happy that you're seeing so much happening in your history class but then and this is the black people mm -hmm. but the white people were fighting it yes because they were not they they thought it was lies of the things that this particular man was telling him mm -hmm. and he and, and and then as time went on i you know the greatest thing about uh being in the South for the amount of time, especially New Orleans, they know their history inside out that in ways that they do. Them. Yeah, they know their history inside out because guess what? There's, it's their descendant, mm -hmm. it's their ancestors. It's kind of almost immediate, one line down, you know? So they can actually tell, and if they're, it's not their descendant, it's their neighbor's descendants or their, you, you know what I mean? Yes. It's, in New Orleans, everything feels like it cannot be past a two degree. That's how intense the culture is with the history. Mm -hmm. And it's in the artwork. It's in the writing. It's in the music. Oh, the these music. things. So think about how these three things have actually turned into a phenomenal way that people were able to preserve their culture without anybody fighting them. Mm 
-hmm. you know, and that is how I see it. Now, I've gone through my own, you know, like depression where, when I was in college. I do have to say that at one point, you know, you're trying to prove that you are a good person, you know. And at one point, I woke up in the middle of the night in one of my bouts of depression. And I said, you know, no matter what I do, they're always going to see a black person. Regardless, they're going to see that before they see anything else. And to me, I'm like, okay. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and it's like, I have no control over that. None. All I have control over is me. You know, that took a whole lot of weight off of my shoulder. I know what I know. I know what I like. I know what I, I love to do in life. Okay? Just, just the same things, just I'm older. But I do have to tell you, that freed me up because I refused to let anybody tell me anything less mm -hmm. about, well, you know, you're different from those people or you're this. What else is in you? You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a certain, certain uh, separation that they try. Okay, you can be a little bit of black, but you don't really act black. But as you know, time I'm goes on, mm -hmm. as time goes on, the one thing that you definitely have to say is you just need to know more black people because apparently I know more white people than you know more black people. And and tell you, but the thing that I can tell you is that it's not about the white people. When I look at white people, I'm not looking at, I'm like, he's Jewish, he's mm -hmm. Italian, he's the, because they bring a different mix to the table. It's the wasp, I guess, you know, that you mm -hmm. think about. So in the black community, you have Jamaican, you have Southern, you have Brazilian, you, you have, have Nigerian, you got and we and you have Nigerian, oh, Asian, and man, we could go Senegalese, time. Senegalese, because I love Senegalese food. And the thing that gets me is that each one of them, no matter what race you are that they put you in, they bring a whole nother dynamic to it. You know, and so at the end of the day, I sit there and I got, I can't think like that. It's going to mm -hmm. drive me bonkers, especially if you are going around with a little bit of free thought in your head. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I got a lot of free thought up here. <laughs> if you, when you have the free thought, because you know other cultures, yes. if you have not known other cultures and you only know your culture, if a tree fell in the forest. Are you going to know? <laughs> there you go. Nope. Wouldn't have a clue. So I have to totally feel that in order for any sort of healing to know, I mean, any sort of healing to happen is to know that there's a hell of a lot more to the spices in this meal that we are making to make it a good meal. That's all I'm trying to say. That's there's all, so you, you know what I mean? More. There's so much more that we just, and my, my friends and I, man, we had, we had a heated conversation the other day because it's like, how can we, the question is, oh, everybody, how can we fix it? And like, I, there are so, and like we all agree, there are so many moving parts. There's so much that everybody doesn't know. And like, just like you said, our history, you know, a lot of black people, we don't even know where we, where our ancestors come from. Because I don't have a clue. People stop me on the street all the time. And I'm like, are you, well, what are you? Okay, there you People go. People always like stop me on the street and they're like, what are you? And I'm like, well, as far as I know, I'm black and I don't know what else is mixed up in there. You know, I got to do some ancestry DNA to find out. But it's like, I don't know. And it's so, crazy. So you could say, but at the moment, I'm me. Th there you go. But <laughs> at the moment, you get an Allison because I, I don't know whatever what else is mixed up in the pot. So I, I see that we have our timer. We have about a minute oh, yeah. and 27 yeah. seconds. Let me tell you, we might have to do a part two, y'all, because this just, whew, this was good. Was and we all, look, me and my friends, we already knew it was going to be juicy. We already <laughs> knew this was going to be exactly what we all needed for the culture, folks. I'm so glad.
So I want to thank you. I had fun. I want to thank you so much because you brought so much to the table. You got me over here like, you know what? I need to I need to write some stuff down. I got to figure this out. I need to just meditate. I need to listen to the universe and see what's coming Me next. Meditate. Yes. I've been doing I've been doing it and it's bring, bringing forth a lot of abundance. That's the other thing we don't know mm -hmm. how abundant we are. We don't know because nobody told us. We 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 live in lack, but we don't mm -hmm. live in abundance. We need to live in abundance. Let me tell you, the world will be a hell of a lot better place. Wouldn't it? Okay, I'm gonna title this "Live in Abundance." I love that. Okay, please do so. Gonna... Please so do I so. So I thank you so much. This was thank you. That I needed and more. You're gonna send me the info, and then I'm gonna I will. the bro for the show that is going to be next month. You know, next month is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I thank you so much. You have a beautiful and day. look at my Patreon page. I have a Patreon page, so oh, of look course. at my Patreon. I'm checking it all out. Thank yeah, you okay. so much.